name's Chris, welcome along to part two of the KWA LM4 build. Uh, this is part two, so it's going to be the upper receiver we're working on. As with the lower, uh, I totally took it apart a little while ago, sent off uh, the upper and the barrel, had them uh, serocoated. coated uh, Before I did that, I uh, myself re-threaded, re-profiled the threads here on the front upper receiver extension. So they are to the spec of uh, the same thing that a real AR uses, which is to facilitate uh, fitting the Midwest Industries handguard because it uses a proprietary barrel nut. So uh, if you try and thread that onto the, your airsoft upper, it won't go. But got, it, got that changed. And like I say, have the Cerakote done. Good thing about having it done is that the, the wobble that you often get in the rail on top because this isn't a single piece of metal as it, it should be and as it usually is uh, this rail gets into wobble but that's gone now and um, the only thing I didn't take out when I sent it off was the board assist because I didn't have a basically I didn't have the right uh, punch for getting the, the roll pin out that holds it in but the uh, guys that did the work for me took that out silicone the board assist as well and all the other pieces you can all see here laid out ready to go barrel uh, I had laved down before it was silicoated. As you'll notice here this step down there's usually a flat portion and then it steps up again and is wider That's and that forms a cutout for mounting the forward bracket on a 40mm launcher M203 generally. I had some material mach machined off on a lathe down there just reduced the, the weight at the very front of the barrel took a little bit off there. So here's our pretty much stripped upper like I say, except for the forward assist I'm going to start, um, go with some of the simpler things, uh, I'm going to put the dust cover on. Got a little e-clip here to fit on, this is going to be a bit fiddly. Turned out I spent ages with the needle nose trying to get that on and then just use my thumb and that did a better job, so there we go. Uh, dust cover retained, flex open as it should. The next thing I'm going to do this you sort of you can kind of approach uh, an upper build in various different ways. There's no set order as there is with the lower, you have to put uh, you know, the, the, the pistol grip mounting block, uh, then the trigger, the sear, the, the hammer, do, 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 in, a set, in that set order. It's not so much the case with the upper you get a little bit of flexibility so uh, now for example I think I'll probably assemble my fake gas tube uh, it's just literally a solid rod of metals no hole down it as there would be um, onto the fake gas block uh, this is a GMP one low profile copy of the Daniel Defence low profile block so just gonna put in our gas tube and hammer in the roll pin tiny little pin that retains it in place. That's that retained. Obviously you want to make sure your the, the kink as it were, the curvature in the gas tube goes upwards otherwise you'll have some serious problems lining up this end with the hole in your upper receiver. I didn't actually have a gas tube that was the right length for some reason. Um, either I must have swapped one by accident or the one I had didn't actually reach all the way into that hole in the upper. It stopped about there and it was like sort of, I'd kind of done a bodge solution because it was rattling around so I'd sort of glued it in, to the, the barrel nut um, but obviously that isn't ideal so I took a much longer gas tube uh, and got, got the Dremel on it, cut it down so it should once I've mounted the gas block in the correct place on the barrel this tube should just sit inside the upper in just the right place like that so fingers crossed it goes together right next thing I'm going to put the combined got the inner barrel and the hop unit it goes into the outer barrel make sure we get things the right way up here and the KWA has screw holes here and here that uh, secure the hop unit in place to an extent anyway 
unfortunately the, the inner barrel is a really good tight fit and it's got o-rings and a rubber sleeve um, so you're not going to have the inner barrel rattling around inside the outer which is obviously going to destroy your accuracy not going to worry about loctite on those to be honest they're not going to they're not going to go anywhere now you could at this point you could either fit the barrel to the receiver and then put on your gas block or you can uh, attach the gas block then put them both on. I'm going to go to put the barrel onto the upper then fit the gas block because you then got you just it's one less thing to try and line up you're only lining up the barrel into the upper instead of trying to get the barrel in the upper while doing that. It's not the biggest deal in the world but it just makes life a little bit easier. Now, the tricky part at this point is actually your alignment of your barrel nut because you want to make sure that on this particular one anyway on the barrel nut that Midwest Industries supply you've got to line up one of these teeth with the hole in the upper or you'll never fit your gas tube on the one hand that, that tube doesn't matter for itself but I like to have it there um, I think it you know it does enhance the look of the thing and just feels like a, a, a sort of more a more professionally done build if you actually get these things right so this is the uh, wrench that you, you use a, a half inch adapter uh, torque bar or a ratchet bar uh, on this. I might be able to get it on hand tight and have one line up. We'll see. I'll put some Loctite on before that, so, but uh, we'll see how it goes. One thing I do have is these. Uh, Sort of makeshift vice block. This is a plastic that's nicknamed polymorph. There's a lot of uh, polyvinyl chloride or, or something like that. I can't remember the exact scientific name, but you can buy this stuff quite cheap on eBay. It comes in little granules, big bag of stuff. You drop it in hot water. I molded it into two sort of roughly rectangular shaped blocks and then just squished it onto the side of the upper. And those those actually hold the upper, and then you could then squish it into the vice and you can mount it that way. Unfortunately. Actually, my blocks need a bit of reprofiling in this area because I can't actually get to the teeth on the barrel nut so I can work on it in the vice. But it'll be alright with that for now because uh, with an AR upper, what you can do vice wise is quite simply open it right up. About that way. And then you can just place it depending on the width of the vice, you can just put it with the top rail. Um, to one side that flat and because they're both flat it's not ideal but it does actually do the job just fine so we're not going to be talking this nut down to a really heavy value so you know in terms of the pounds inches or the newtons so new meters so uh, yeah just vicing it like that will do but I would I'd, if you can if you can stretch to about 10 12 quid for a, maybe I think you need about a kilo maybe half a kilo I can't remember exactly what I bought get some of this polymorph stuff, just go on eBay, really handy. It's pretty much there to be honest, I don't think, I don't, yeah, by hand, I could get a ratchet bar on it and do it even tighter, and on a real gun, yeah, you would, and you, you know, you'd get it viced a bit more properly than I have. There's actually a reason to deliberately not do that nut up too tight uh, on an airsoft gun because uh, depending on the exact sort of gun you have, you're probably more likely to break your upper receiver than you are to, you know, secure your barrel even better. Uh, as it is, my barrel is not going anywhere. That will be tight enough. It's not going to undo, especially with the Loctite on there. So yeah, just hand tight with the proper wrench. Bit of that Loctite there, it'll be fine. At this point, I'm going to do my gas block and tube. Next thing will be the handguard, so we've got our Midwest Industries Gen 2 SS series free float tubular rail system here, uh, handguard, um, hydro dipped again as with the bus stock and the pistol grip on the lower, uh, it's been hydro dipped by Camo Lab in the UK, it's a pretty nice little job on it, uh, in the multicam film obviously, um, but before we do that, because I'm using the Haley Strategic Thorntail mount, or is it the drop wing, I can't remember, it's one of those. I think this is the drop wing, this is sort of what's designed to work with most tubular handguards. Uh, because of 
how you have to get into the bolts. I'm going to attach my uh, my surefire light to the mount, then the mount onto the uh, onto the fore end before I put the handguard onto the rifle, because otherwise it would be impossible. Okay, we're on now. Sorted. So I'm going to pick where I want the light to go on my rail. Go with the mount. Line it up so it's sort of. Good thing about these Midwest rails combined with the H strategic mount is that the lights that come with the mount, the screws, sorry, that come with the mount, are actually compatible with the screws in the handguard that are already drilled and tapped in there. So, what you, although you can't use two of them, sadly, they're a bit far apart, you can use one, and that means you only have to use one of these back mounting plates, which are a bit of a nightmare to fit in. So, only having to use the one of them instead of two is pretty handy. So that is our Surefire M300A, I think I've got the 300C, Hayes strategic mount onto the Midwest tube hangar. Got our remote switch that I'll be installing later. But first thing, I'm going to actually put the hangar onto the upper receiver. Clicked on nicely there, tighten these two bolts. Making some good progress as you can see. And definitely putting that hand guard on makes a big change in just a couple of seconds. Um, the weight's definitely adding up now, but still a you know, comparatively lightweight up and not using a quad rail hand guard, so you uh, shaves a lot of weight from the build. Shouldn't have actually taken that out of the vice because the next thing I'm going to do is the muzzle device is the PTS version of the Battle Comp Enterprises Battle Comp 1.5. This is a good good point to use my use my vice blocks that I made because they will work for this. show you guys as well how these things work. If you ever if you ever need to really do any much work on, on anything on a part of a gun like this, you really uh, if you don't have a vice I would advise picking one up. Uh, I don't know how much they cost but if you've got any sort of a desk where you can drill a couple of holes and attach a vice, I doubt it's that much for just a little one like this and then you can make vice blocks for literally anything using this this polymorph plastic and it's really easy, you just dunk it in boiling water uh, and it goes malleable. You shape it how you want it, you fit it around the part, put it in the vise then and uh, let it cool sets and if you want to change it, uh, make something else out of the plastic, you literally just dunk it in boiling water again and, uh, and it turns soft and you can do that as many times as you like. I've ran the muzzle device down the threads, haven't fitted the spring and the washer yet, but uh, just run it down the threads to get it sort of prepared as it were for the final mounting. There we go, fully mounted and ready. So that is, I mean, functionally, that's pretty much the upper dome. I mean, that's, you know, it's pretty much just accessories left at this point. So what we'll do is we'll do the, the tail switch for the light. So just plug that in. 
the, the Surefire tape switches is the SR07 I think they have this little cut here because it's quite a sort of a soft rubbery plastic it doesn't hold on to the wrist terribly well so I'll find a spot where it lines up with one of these holes go with there and I'll set it in a good place for when it's actually the weapons in the shoulder and thread take the snips to the excess on the zip tie obviously you don't want that hanging off your gun unfortunately the actual locking block on the zip tie is too large to fit uh, through, the, through the holes in the hair guard but uh, you know, I'm not sure whether this works on, on the real thing I don't know whether you'd have to use something a bit more heat resistant than a plastic zip tie but obviously the barrel doesn't get hot in there so often it does the job uh, one thing I will do later on is um, to secure you can use cable ties on, on your loose cable here uh, it's not ideal though it's if you do them too tight you can definitely pinch and chafe and wear away the insulation on the cable which on a I mean these switches are like at least $70 so you don't really want to be wearing that out from the zip tie so you've got the wall sport industries rail bungees here or you can just if you're a sensible person unlike me you can just buy some fucking bungee cord and just uh, lace it through the holes in your handguard just to secure those cables like I said I'll, I'll do that in a bit uh, backup iron sights now emboss gen 2's super simple to mount rear sight goes on actually wants to move forward one red slot because that's overhanging the back of the upper at the moment and you don't want to be hanging out the back Okay, pretty much the last thing, and with the Magpul Industries rail sling attachment, just gives the option because I've got the ASAP plate on the lower, um, need some sort of sling attachment up front on the rail so I can switch uh, to, a, to a two point configuration on the sling. There we have it, folks. Upper is uh, ready to go. We've got our charging handle and bolt carrier group just here that's that end, just going to put that on the lower and everything should shoot correctly hopefully there we go uh, it was interesting in seeing the, the complete gun probably you know, shooting test etc uh, I'll do a video on that later on down the line Facebook, Twitter, all that good shit is in the description box below. Uh, thanks to all the subscribers, all the, the likes up and fucking shares and stuff like that. And uh, thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you next time.